Hi, and welcome to Word in Season. I want to talk about and hopefully encourage you today about being victorious in the whole area of temptation. There is no denying that temptation is something that we all face. It is a part of the normal Christian life and experience. The scriptures make that clear and no one is exempt or ever gets beyond its influence. And of course, Jesus, we know, was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not sin. I want to focus on just one scripture and for me, what I call the big daddy of them all that covers a number of things that has helped me personally in this whole journey. It's from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Or as the NIV says, walk in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, there's three points I'd like to draw out from that. Firstly, when we give ourselves to God's stuff, that is worship, Bible reading, prayer, meeting together, serving, that is walking in the spirit, you actually don't have time on your hands to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Temptation is also a lot less likely to strike in these places too. Whilst that may be pretty obvious, for some of us, switching off the TV and other media devices to engage in spiritual activities, as mentioned earlier, may very well go a long way to restrict the tentacles of temptation coming at us also. Secondly, when we are doing these things, walking in the spirit, we are actually strengthening ourselves in God building ourselves up in our faith and equipping ourselves to be able to resist the evil one better. And thirdly, when we are giving ourselves to the things of God, we are growing more in love and awe with God that makes temptation and sin a lot less attractive. And I would like to add one other thing, and that is let walking in the spirit become a discipline, a beautiful discipline. Uh, using the analogy of, say, football training, uh, it can often be very routine. There's often lots of repetitive drills and it's not always very exciting. In fact, it can be a bit of a drudgery if we are honest. But Come the big match and under pressure, you perform well. The drills, the routines, even the drudgery of it all pays off. And it's true in the Christian life. When we find ourselves under pressure from the enemy, enemy these spiritual disciplines have a way of paying off. Sometimes we admire discipline in the area of academia, work and sports, but for some reason, when it comes to the spiritual life, we can feel a bit awkward and coy for some reason about discipline. I think it's possibly because we confuse health, healthy discipline with legalism and the devil plays havoc with confusion here too. To be honest, discipline doesn't come easy for me. I didn't grow up with a lot of it, but I can sure tell you that I am thankful for it because it works for me spiritually. For example, occasionally I can wake up with a whole lot of negativity clouding my mind. It's not something I've initiated. It is simply I have come to learn that spiritual warfare is attempting to distract me and tempt me away from God. Thankfully, applying myself to the disciplines of walking in the Spirit, that is, giving time to God, namely in Bible reading, prayer and worship, are the sure remedy for breaking these assaults from the enemy. It's actually like a mind-altering experience uh, that happens when I do these things, particularly when I've been encountering uh, real spiritual warfare. And continuing with the football analogy, 
It's been like I've had a six goal second quarter and what a turnaround. But if I'd waited until I felt like giving myself to the things of God, I would be sunk. Thank God for the disciplines. So walk in the spirit, in the beautiful disciplines that God gives us, and we shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh or gratify the desires of the flesh. Church, have a great week. In fact, have a victorious week.